A show of support in Crowley after last night's shootings that left three people dead. A police officer injured, his canine killed in the line of duty. Healthcare hold up, a delay on Capitol Hill. When will lawmakers now vote on repeal and replace? And Mela, crawfish prices are down once again this week. The Crawdack Index right now on KATC. Live from the KATC TV3 studios, this is the KDNS News Channel at 10. And good evening, everyone. Tonight, a police-involved shooting in Crowley that left three people and a police dog dead is still under investigation. A Crowley police officer injured in the shootout is now out of the hospital. Officer Tate Thibodeau was responding to a call of shots fired last night on Josie Street. He was shot in the leg. His dog, Roscoe, was killed. The suspect, Don Johnson, was also killed. Inside that home on Josie Street, police found the body of Katina Stevens. Officers believe she was shot and killed by Johnson. Then this morning, the body of a woman was found in a home on Avenue G. Two children were also found inside unharmed. So far, investigators haven't released the second woman's name. They believe she was shot and killed by Johnson as well. The case is having a big impact in the city. Three is on the street tonight. Our Jameson Crabtree live in Crowley with more. Jameson. Jim, Marcel, this time last night, police responded to a call of shots fired. Over the course of a few hours, there would be three dead two crime scenes, an officer injured, and a police and his, uh, and his police dog killed in the line of duty. And here tonight, a show of support here in Crowley. Senseless acts of violence that are going to divide us as a community, that we're going to come together and we're going to stand in the gap even when things don't make sense. They went through something uh, last night that uh, some of them are, are going to have a little hard time with uh, dealing with, and, and I just thought it, was, it would be a good idea to get the public together. Chad Monso, a city firefighter, helped organize the vigil so that the community could deal with the tragedy. You have an officer that's injured by, by gunfire. Um, you have people that are murdered, senselessly murdered, and, and you know also the loss of a canine. You know, I mean, it, it, it means a lot. You know, there's a lot of emotions going on. The vigil was put together hours before it started, and word spread on Facebook. The message urged strong support from citizens of Crowley to men and women wearing the uniform. You see, ultimately, a city that's willing to come together and put our differences aside and uh, come together for one cause, and that's supporting the people that lost their lives, and that's supporting the police officers that are diligently working hard to keep the city safe. Um, you know, I, I thank God that he wasn't you know, injured fatally or, or life-threatening, and we pray for a speedy recovery for him, as well as all the members of the Crowley Police Department. The exact motive for the sh uh, shooting is still under investigation. Three's on the street. Live in Crowley, Jameson Crabtree, KTC, TV3. Meanwhile, police are looking for two persons of interest after the city's third shooting in less than 24 hours. It happened this afternoon in West Hutchinson, just before the vigil for the victims of last night's shooting got started. Police Chief Jimmy Broussard tells us the two men got into an argument and then shots were fired. No one was injured. Attention all units. Be advised that K201 is not responding. Lieutenant Sean Anderson is no longer with us and ended his watch on Saturday, March 18, 2017. That transmission, the last call today for Lieutenant Sean Anderson. He's the East Baton Rouge deputy who was shot and killed last weekend while investigating a rape case. At his funeral service today, Sheriff Sid Gotro gave Anderson a promotion from sergeant to lieutenant. Anderson's wife and children also shared stories of Anderson's kind nature. Many nights or days after a shift, I'd get calls or texts. You're going to be a little late, changing a tire for somebody on the side of the road. Or, um, it's okay if I get some money out of the bank. I'm going to go buy these kids some food. Lieutenant Anderson was recognized by the state several times, including in 2014 when he served more than 60 high-risk warrants. He had also been awarded the Life Saving Award. He served on the force for 17 years. Here's Rob's 24-hour forecast. A mild night across Acadiana with temperatures mostly upper 60s to lower 70s. 73 degrees right now in Lafayette. Surrounding areas a little bit cooler, but temperatures don't drop a whole lot as southerly winds will be gradually increasing overnight tonight. And that's going to usher in clouds by morning. No fog issues, we think, for tonight. Right near 70, the morning start in Lafayette. And then tomorrow, mostly cloudy, breezy, and warm with temperatures topping out in the lower 80s. Very slight 
chance of a passing isolated shower, but the big action begins after midnight tomorrow night. Showers and storms become likely and there may be a severe weather threat as well. We'll talk more about that and have a much more active 10 day forecast coming up in just a little bit. Day four of the Marksville Marshall murder trial is now over with Derek Stafford's defense team presenting their case today. His lawyers called 15 people to the stand, including Chris Few, the father of six year old Jeremy Martis, who was shot and killed during the on duty shooting. At one point, the defense called for a mistrial after prosecutors brought up Stafford's seventh month suspension from the force while he was indicted on rape charges. Those charges were later dropped. Parish by Parish headlines now. We start in St. Landry with another arrest in last week's triple shooting on Boxy Road. Deputies say Joseph Malbrew turned himself in and now faces a count of attempted first degree murder. Kendall Green had already been arrested on the same charge. On March 13th, three people went to the hospital with gunshot wounds. All three were cousins. One victim who was shot six times told police he was attacked because he told a drug dealer to stop selling near his house. The two others were shot by accident, police say, after they fought over the gun. In Lafayette Parish, a Youngsville man is under arrest after a shooting early this morning. Police say Joshua Addy had been drinking with the victim before they started arguing. Officers say Addy shot at the victim twice but missed. Addy was arrested at his home. A St. Mary Parish man is accused of molesting two juveniles in Bayou Vista. According to the Sheriff's Office, Rodney Frederick inappropriately touched the two juveniles over the course of several years. One of them is now an adult. In Acadia Parish, the Lady Bengal softball team at LSUE is under investigation after an off-campus incident with the Lamar State College Port Arthur softball team. The details about the incident remain unclear, but LSUE officials say they're deciding on the right disciplinary action. In Vermilion Parish, Abbeville residents can expect their water to clear up by the weekend. Many residents have been experiencing discolored water. Mayor Mark Piazza says work crews have been busy making repairs to the water treatment plant, and that system is now working properly again. Right now, Lafayette police are on the lookout for drunk drivers. Police are conducting a sobriety checkpoint somewhere within city limits until 3 o'clock in the morning. Lawmakers will soon consider changes to a state law requiring those wanting to get married to have a birth certificate. Yesterday, a federal judge blocked the law, saying it treated an Indonesian man now living in Lafayette differently from other U.S. citizens. It was intended to stop foreigners from getting visas and citizenship through scam marriages. The law's original sponsor says she'll rewrite it to allow people to seek a waiver from that requirement. State health officials are looking for input on how to improve Louisiana's Medicaid program. Officials were in Lafayette this evening as part of a listening tour to encourage feedback. I serve as a surgeon. I take care of indigent patients, and I know it is a huge struggle to really care for our patients and especially our Medicaid population. And so I really appreciate what these providers do caring for this very vulnerable population. And we have an obligation as a state to do everything we can to listen to the voice of the providers. After a delay on Capitol Hill, a vote is expected tomorrow on efforts to repeal and replace. But do Republicans have the votes they need? The latest count at 1019. Plus some unsettled weather in the forecast. Rob will let us know where and when in his full forecast. But as we head to break for the fourth week in a row, crawfish prices are down in Lafayette. Here's this week's Crawdack Index.